The conversations that are happening, I think, are conversations that wouldn't happen ordinarily if you did not bring together all of these different people with these different perspectives and ways of seeing the world and seeing this issue. I'm Shaquilla Smith, and I'm a program officer at the Fetzer Institute, and I've been designing and co-facilitating and hosting this convening around uh, spirituality at end of life. What we're actually learning is how do we want to live and what does it mean to live well. Um, and by avoiding the topic altogether, we miss out on so many important lessons and moments of connection that are really about love and what it means to live well. I am so into this convening. It's so fun to have a group of people that have clearly spent a lot of time thinking about and caring about these topics, addressing them in an intentional way. And for the purpose of creating some clarity for ourselves so we can forward in our work, and hopefully also that we can send it out there into the world. What's exciting about the convening is just, uh, you know, there are 26 people from different countries, from different disciplines, different ages, different ethnicities, different religious practices all coming together who have an interest in looking at the intersection between mortality or, or serious illness and spirituality. And that is phenomenal. Really, this is something that I think everybody should be talking about because, again, this happens to everybody. It's one of those great equalizers. And um, there's such a profound um, possibility around spiritual deepening and um, maybe even transformation when you deal with issues around mortality and end of life. Spirituality and mortality is one of the things that we can completely rely on. Like it's one of the three things, you know, and the historical Buddha talked about that we have three things we can completely count on. We're going to age, we're going to get sick, and we're going to die. And so to deny what we can most rely on is not only critical, but it's exactly maybe what life is meant to be. If somebody's already spent time thinking about their spiritual lives, um, what, if anything, is afterlife, what their life has meant, purpose, resilience, etc. It makes the process of preparing for the end of life go so much smoother because then we're focused on the practical things. We're not concerned with like the big picture things. Instead of trying to control everything, if we open to wonder and mystery in all aspects of our life, not just death and dying, imagine the fullness, the love, and uh, to, to see people coming to this and saying, I have learned to listen deeply. I have learned to welcome silence. I have learned what accompaniment means, what accompaniment means. Um, and that's really gratifying. And I think that's what we as a community of people, of healthcare professionals, that's ultimately what we're here for. It's for the sake of understanding that we nourish each other because we bring these enriched experiences from our lives. We are here with nurses and physicians, um, patient advocates, uh, behavioral economists, uh, architects, all of whom somehow, because they're human, have something to say about this process of, of end of life. Initially, when we are challenged with the prospect of our dying, either in ourselves or with a loved one where we're confronting mortality, um, there's a denial, there's a chaos. What does this mean? How am I going to handle this? The bottom line is, the moment we realize that we have a finite amount of time on this wonderful planet, you'll do everything you can to maximize it. So I think the spiritual message in that is that um, part of caring for people who are seriously ill, and particularly at the end of life, but even earlier, is to understand what their beliefs and values are, what gives them meaning, what gives them a sense of hope. I love hope. I think hope is so necessary and so juicy. I think it's also really useful in the end of life context, as long as the hope is not to not die. 
I think hope has a unique role in the end of life context because it can create opportunities for treatment plans or even some realistic expectations of what's going to happen at the end of this treatment or at the end of this disease. But we can't hope to not die. It's simply not possible. How do you help people who are in what we might colloquially call hopeless situations um, to have a sense of hope, to have a sense of, of meaning, to feel that life is still worth it and worth living? And I think hope is one of the most, if not the most, fundamental virtue of the human experience. Part of what um, we can do as a community that's interested in hope and thinks about it more expansively is to get across to the healthcare system and the healthcare community that hope is way bigger than cure. When it comes to hope, all the decisions and all the challenges that our patients have, oftentimes they feel that they are helpless and nothing left for them to latch onto. My job is to, to restore that hope for them by digging in and looking for the stories and the narratives and who's there in their life that brings them hope, who's there in their life that brings them meaning, whether it be it family, whether it be it religion, whether it be it culture, and, and bring those elements to literally be there when the time is difficult. So I'm excited that a big chunk of this gathering we have been talking about creating communities of care and the role that everyday people who are actually powerful, amazing people can play in, in the solution of, of deepening spiritually towards the end of life. There's something about it that is um, um, not only needed, but it's something about it that is beautiful as well. My hope is that we can um, all feel comfortable having those conversations and also have those be moments to, again, really grapple with these deep questions of um, life and what it means to be alive and what it means to love. And so like that, love and compassion grows from when we can really say, wow, I suffer, you too. Or how do you suffer? Or as the great Toni Morrison says, why is just so difficult? We must take refuge in how. And so for us, you know, that has been a guiding, you know, teaching for me for many years. And so I'm grateful to her and I'm grateful to have this opportunity to be alive.